afternoon, and thank you all for coming. Talk right into it. Talk right into it. Talk right into it. How's that? <laughs> Uh, my name is Paul Spector. I was on uh, City Council until, am I on until late? Still on. So I'm still on for a few more minutes. I served for six terms with most of these folks here. And I'll be your master of ceremonies. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and this is actually the first swearing in ceremony since we changed the city charter done by a vote a few years ago. And one of the most significant things that was changed in that charter was that we went from a four-year, a two-year term for the mayor to a four-year term. So this is one of those years we didn't elect the mayor, although thank you, mayor, for coming today. Um, <laughs> mayor Narkowitz does not have to take the oath of office again. However, I was thinking kind of like, couples who after 20, 30 years and are loving want to renew their vows. If you choose to do that, we hear you can do that. So, uh, I'd like to also recognize some of the other official, elected officials who are in the room or former officials. So besides Mayor Narkowitz is the Superintendent John Provost. Where are you? Thank you for coming. Former Ward 3 City Councilor Alex Giesland. And the Registrar of Deeds, Mary Oberling. So we're here today both to fulfill uh, a formal need, which is that we legally have to swear in these folks, but also a more informal and maybe even a more important thing, which to, is to thank them all for serving. And this is a great group to work with. I know on the city council, but I also know a lot of you on the school committee. And as I was thinking about today, I, I realized that through one of the most common things people have said to me in the 12 years I've been on the council is they'll come up to me and stop and shop or on the street and I'll say, boy, what a thankless job you have. What a thankless job. They say, really, they say it over and over. I know a lot of counselors are nodding their head. And it took me a long time to realize that every time they said that, they were saying, thank you for doing this job. And today is really about saying thank you for doing this job and also thank you for doing it so well. Um, I was earlier listening to the radio, which I shouldn't have done, and to the news, and I was thinking, I wish this group was served in the House of Representatives and the Senate. This group is an intelligent, competent, caring, dedicated, and most importantly, egoless. And they are certainly not doing this for the money. So thank you for coming. Um, so leading us today and beginning the to have the Pledge of Allegiance start us off, I'd like to introduce Steve Connor. But you're, I'm going to actually introduce you, Steve, oh, because you, you should have an introduction. Um, Steve is a military veteran who served in the Navy, and for decades after that, and that was when in the 70s, yes. and for decades after that has been a really amazing and effective advocate for other veterans. In 2004, Steve signed on as the local veteran service officer, and he's currently the director of the Central Hampshire Veteran Services. He's the past president of the Massachusetts Veteran Service Association, and he's also a member of Governor Baker's committee to develop and implement a plan to prevent and end homelessness among Massachusetts veterans. And also, Steve is just a great guy. So, Steve, if you'll lead us. Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah, please stand. I just would like to say that uh, I've been doing this for, I'm just finishing up my 12th year, and as a uh, native son of Northampton, of the great village of Florence, um, it's been great to serve this city. Uh, I've loved the work. It's got its challenges, but uh, I'm really grateful that I'm in this position. And now we serve 11 communities. Uh, throughout Hampshire County, and uh, we're trying to do as good a job there as we've tried to do here. So, uh, thank you, and uh, I won't call you to attention, but you'll you'll get it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Thank you. And I probably should have turned around and do it, but I want to make sure you're all full. Thank you. Thank you. To lead us in the invocation will be Dr. Andrea Vazian. Maybe practice her name, which I love. Andrea Vazian is a great name. Um, she has been the senior pastor at the Haydenville Congregational Church. And she's well known in our community as a longtime activist for peace and social justice and LBGT civil rights and civil liberties and in environmental sustainability. Reverend Dr. Avazian, and I said if she had been elected to the council, would I then need to have said Reverend Dr. Counselor Avazian, uh, is one of the co-founders of Religious Witness for the Earth. And this is an organization which is a grassroots network of interfaith multicultural leaders who focus on ways to bring attention and clarity to the environmental dangers facing our planet. Reverend Vazian is here today to give the invitation and benediction. Her articles in the Daily Hampshire Gazette focus on inter the intersection of faith, culture, and politics. And in addition, you can even get her uh, sermons as podcasts, or are they just online? They're podcasts on the internet. So Dr. Vaz. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. May the spirit of wisdom and love settle on this distinguished gathering of community leaders. Like Paul, I want to give words to the feelings of gratitude that permeate this place. Gratitude for community leaders willing to invest untold hours for the betterment of our community. Gratitude for the vision and strength <coughs> and commitment required to run for elected office. Gratitude for the love for community that our elected officials demonstrate through their work and words and witness. We honor you, we appreciate you, and we thank you. Let us now bless the elected city officials and community leaders gathered here today. May you be blessed with discomfort at easy answers so you continue to think and feel deeply even when the going gets tough, especially when the going gets tough. May you be blessed with anger at injustice and oppression so that you always work for fairness and peace safety and inclusion for all members of the human family. May you be blessed with an aching for connection so that you turn to us, your neighbors and colleagues and friends for support and good counsel when a new voice might shed light on an area of trouble or confusion. And may you be blessed with clarity courage and cool heads for those are the qualities that are needed when problems multiply and debates intensify and you know that you are already blessed with our admiration our appreciation and our affection so go forward to discern imagine listen and lead Next, we will um, do the oath of office. And um, the first thing we'll, we'll have is that our city clerk will be, will take the oath. And in, to administer that oath will be William O'Reardon, who's a former chief probation officer in the Massachusetts court system. He was also one of the committee members to honor Dominic Daly and James Halligan. And these were two Irish immigrants were wrongly convicted of a local murder almost 200 years ago. It just seemed very appropriate that today, when we're also talking about some newer members of our community on a national level, not being very welcoming, seeing them as the other, that 
Mr. O'Reardon was part of a group saying it's we need to look at those civil liberties and to civil liberties for all of us and freedom for all of us, especially among the immigrant community. Today, Mr. O'Reardon continues work in the court system as a justice of peace, and he will start the swearing in process by administering the oath of office to Wendy Maz, our city clerk, who has just been reelected. She also has the best dog treats in North Carolina. <laughs> um, um, after the oath is administered to Clerk Maza, then she will administer the oath to each of the other groups. So wait till Wendy, then we'll call you group by group, is that right? And you'll come up. So, Justice Joe Reardon. I'm honored and privileged to be here as a son of their native son of Northampton and um, spent a lot of time in the city clerk's office in the 50s with uh, Jake Foley and the father and I think uh, Marianne and Mike Kaoway will remember them and uh, and remember the good times I certainly admire admire Jake and I admire Wendy and all you who serve and congratulations to everybody here today <clears throat> okay Wendy if you raise your right hand please and I I Maza, do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me. All the duties incumbent upon me as city clerk of the city of Northampton. As city clerk, city of Northampton. According to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. And understanding. Agreeably to the rules, agreeably to the rules and regulations, and regulations of the Constitution, of the Constitution, and laws of the Commonwealth, and the laws of the Commonwealth, the Charter, the Charter, ordinances, ordinances, and rules, and rules of the City of Northampton, the City of Northampton. So help me God. So help me God. Counselors, uh, step up. If you would raise your right hand for me. I state your name. I, I do, say do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Do faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties of the office to which I've been elected. Of the office to which I've been elected. In accordance with the Constitution, in accordance with the Constitution of this Commonwealth, of this Commonwealth, Commonwealth the Charter, the Charter, Charter ordinances, 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 and rules of the City of Northampton, to the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Councilors. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office to which I have been elected. To which, which I, have I have been elected. elected. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. Ordinances. Ordinances. And rules of the City of Northampton. And rules of the City of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Solemnly swear, to faithfully and impartially, 
Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. To which I've been elected. To which I've been elected. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. Ordinances. Ordinances. And the rules of the City of Northampton. And the rules of the City of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, gentlemen. The elector under the Oliver Smith will. Oh. <laughs> right I, David A. Murphy. I, David A. Murphy. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully and impartially. To faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office to which I've been elected. Of the office to which I've been elected. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. In accordance to the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. Ordinances. Ordinances. And the rules of the City of Northampton. And the rules of the City of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> There are three, but one of one of the trustees was unable to make it today, so she'll be sworn in at another time. Raise right hand. I state your name. I, Kathleen White. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully and impartially. Faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties. The of the office to which I've been elected. The office to which I've been elected. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. The Ordinances. The Ordinances. And the Rules of the City of Northampton. The Rules of the City of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Community preservation. The two members. Please write the answer. I state your name. I David Wagner. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To faithfully and impartially. Major faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of the office. Discharge the duties of the office. To which I've been elected. To which I've been elected. In accordance with the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The ordinances of the Constitution of the Commonwealth. The Charter. The Charter. The ordinances. The ordinances. And the rules of the City of Northampton. The rules of the City of Northampton. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> Mr. Sullivan, I guess you were the keynote speaker. When I heard Dave Sullivan, and I, I knew Dave for a number of years, but I didn't connect that he was the guy who was going to be the uh, district attorney for our district. And my own impression of district attorneys were always they're kind of fierce other you know, prosecutors. He's just the nicest guy. So I, was, I said, wow, is that the same guy? Is that the same Dave Sullivan? Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about, about Mr. Sullivan. He's been an attorney and advocate for over 29 years. He came to the Pioneer Valley from eastern Massachusetts. We won't hold that against him. He came in 1988. But his roots are really in western Massachusetts and Northampton because they, they go back to the early 1960s. His family lived for over three years on Marshall Street in Ward 3. Um, Dave attended the University of Massachusetts at Amherst from 77 to 81 and lived on Graves Avenue in Northampton after college. In 88, that's 1988, he returned to Northampton as a lawyer and, in, and he became the city attorney at, for East Hampton in 1992. Is that correct? Okay. And in 2003, Mr. Sullivan was elected and began as the Hampshire County Register of Probate position that he held until 2011 when he was then elected as the state's 28th Northwestern District Attorney, and I still can't believe it's the same person. The, North, the Office of District Attorney addresses many issues that are important to citizens in our city. And again, not only do I think of district attorneys on an emotional level of their personalities being these tough guys, which I don't get that from Dave, I also often think of it as kind of prosec they're prosecuting crimes. 
But under Dave's leadership, it's really been more about prevention and involvement in the community, whether that's involvement with vital city government, with schools, with other agencies, or with citizens directly. And I think the outcome of that collaborative effort is a more engaged and enlightened community and ultimately a safer community. So please welcome in. Thanks, Paul. Uh, it's an honor uh, to join you here today uh, for this solemn but also celebratory occasion. Um, we're here today because we all love and care for the city of Northampton. Whether we're an elected official, lifelong or new resident, a student, a shop owner, a laborer, a retiree, or visitor, we all have a stake in the quality of life in Northampton. We all want a city that has safe neighborhoods, great schools, a strong economy and jobs, and a vibrant cultural life. We want a city that embodies our values and our aspirations. We want a city we can all be proud of. <coughs> For the past thousand years, Northampton has been at the heart of the Connecticut Valley. Prior to the town of Nonatuck, later to become Northampton in 1654, the native peoples inhabited and governed this fertile land. It was crossroads for agriculture, commerce, and self-government. A quote from historic Northampton, Native American communities were based upon principles of equality. Families that were successful in hunting, hunting or farming in a given year shared some of their surplus with those who had less. Political leaders, or sachems, were spokesmen or spokeswomen for their communities. Although they usually came from leading families, they would be replaced if they failed to perform satisfactorily. The tradition of caring for our community and families started back then, and it continues today. The tradition of replacing our leaders we don't like or don't do the job the collective tribe deems satisfactory is also alive and well. I want to first thank the family members and friends of all our elected officials. You give the necessary support and encouragement to these elected leaders. You are the unsung heroes of their election campaigns. You take the phone calls, cook the meals, and transport the kids, and sacrifice your personal time so they can attend meetings and events. You even have the fun job of listening to your loved ones vent and whine after a tough meeting. I want to especially thank our Master of Ceremonies, Paul Spector, for all he has given to enhance the fabric of Northampton's government and civic life. Ward 2 and the city are richer for your humanity and the progressive values you shared year in and year out. You will be dearly missed in the council chambers. I want to thank all of our elected leaders for making your community a priority. You have made a decision to place your community above self. Your ability to listen and learn from your constituents, city employees, and fellow elected leaders is vital to making this small engine of democracy work. Many of the essential but low-key decisions you will make will go unrecognized. However, some decisions will be difficult, emotionally draining, and controversial. Your solemn oath and commitment to your fellow citizens should guide you in making the right decisions. Doing the right thing is not always popular. The courage of your convictions and values should always be your compass. As the saying goes, democracy is a participatory sport. 
Your participation is important, not only to the citizens of Northampton, but all the people who depend upon Northampton for their livelihood or their daily living. You are the voice of the people. Your civic engagement helps guide the present and future of Northampton. You help keep the executive branch, including the mayor and city departments, honest and on their toes and pointed in the right direction. Northampton is at a crossroads. It always has and always will be. This is the nature of a dynamic community. I have a few questions I'd like to toss your way as we start the new year. How do we keep Northampton affordable so our senior citizens, working class, and young people can still live here? How do we keep Northampton affordable so our homegrown businesses and cultural venues don't close or become homogeneous storefronts that we see in every strip mall in America? <coughs> How do we maintain the quality of schools roads and public works without raising taxes through the roof? How do we assure that we live in a safe community while maintaining our privacy and civil liberties? How do we promote growth and change while also maintaining the beauty and stability of our community? How do we respect our time-bound traditions and values while reinventing ourselves and community to meet new challenges? How do we debate the issues and problems of the day while remaining respectful and kind to each other? Lastly, how do we care for Northampton while also impacting our global world? These are just some of the questions that you and others in our community will grapple with in your roles as elected leaders and engaged citizens. I'll leave with a few more thoughts. Northampton never should be an island unto itself. The voices and movements for change have always found their birth and development in small, thoughtful, and deliberate communities. Northampton has been one of those communities. It has been the fertile earth for political discourse, social change, and economic justice. The movements addressing slavery, equal marriage, global warming, women's rights, peace and justice, living wages, smart growth, free speech, religious tolerance, and many other issues have found their roots in sunlight in Northampton. As elected leaders and citizens, let's continue to work together to cultivate the rich and diverse cultural place we call Northampton. I'll leave with a quote from Barack Obama. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. Thanks for being the change the people have chosen. Before we get to a few closing remarks from former, former council president Bill White, he's current council president, I want to thank a few people. I want to thank Patty Shaughnessy. Where's Patty? Is she here? Hi, Patty. Can you stand up? Because she provided this venue here today. Thank you, Patty. Uh, I also want to thank NCTV for, for taping the event. And it's the staff at. Are you the only person? Who, could you stand up too? <laughs> yeah. These guys, they are taping all of these, well, not just about every meeting. They tape every council meeting, every school committee meeting. Um, and for those of you who then can watch it at later times or you watch it live, um, our form, 
former mayor used to call it the boring channel, but it's great for sleep, but I know a lot of you watch it. But these are the folks who do all the, all the work to make sure this happens. Some of them are paid, many of them are volunteers. So thank you very much. And finally, the most important thanks today goes to Pam Powers, who's the administrative assistant of the city council, because it was Pam, because this is brand new, anything we're doing today has become a tradition, because it's year one. When we stood up and applauded, Steve and I said, well, this is how they're gonna do it 100 years from now. And it's Pam Powers who kind of said, we need to do something for these elected officials, because it's always been the mayor's kind of inauguration with the rest of us coming on board who have been elected. And Pam said we should do something. She put all of this together. She even put most of what I'm saying together. So where's, where's Pam? <laughs> Pam is also the person who keeps our city council running. She's fantastic. So finally, I want to introduce Bill Dwight, who will say a few closing remarks, maybe, I don't know, an hour or two. <laughs> Oh, and I, I just realized, so I'm not going to say what I was going to say, because I, I, I thought of something. And what I thought of was, recently they interviewed me for the newspaper, and they asked me, what are the things you were proudest of in terms of your 12 years on the city council? And I said a few things, and I realized there was one I forgot, and I'm very proud of it. And I hope you're still proud of it, which was a number of years ago after Bill had served. And I went into the video store, and there was Bill, and I dragged him, fought with him, cajoled him, begged him to run again for city council, and I then encouraged him to run as president of the council, and I'm very proud of that, so thank you, Bill. And the second thing I was asked in that interview was, are there any specific moments on the council, are there any events specific that you remember that you know, stand out, that were, and I, I kind of couldn't, I mean, they kind of blended together, and now I have one which was our last council meeting a few weeks ago. I was so touched and moved when you gave your little talk about my leaving. Uh, it was really incredible, and thank you. I wanted to say that publicly. And I was very moved. And one of the things that moved me most was Bill only spoke for a few moments, very eloquently, as he always does. But he was then so choked up, he couldn't continue. So, Bill, I don't, I don't have closing remarks because you all have lives to live. I am, this is actually, this is a ruse to get Paul up here. Paul was a city councilor until just moments ago. He's no longer a city councilor. I, you know, I was struggling to try to find something at the time to give you, we give you a little piece of paper that we give to anyone for a bookmark, but it was something. And the only thing I could come up with was a key um, this is Paul's <laughs> nameplate. This is this is you have access to the public bathroom in the oh, right. <laughs> uh, service, But actually Pam was this more is, thoughtful. This is very valuable. <laughs> <laughs> Pam was more thoughtful, as you noted that Pam the, the reason we're here today and the reason we're not actually sitting in the in the boiler room just taking the oath is uh, she also thought that maybe we should recognize you with something more substantive. So she slapped this together. Um, this is uh, in recognition of deep and deep gratitude for Paul Spector's exemplary service as a War II city councilor and by extension to the citizens of Northampton. Thank you for 12 years of service. Quote is that very apt, and Pam chose this, and she knows you well. It says, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. And that was Winston Churchill. So, Paul, thank you so much. And there you go. And thank you all. We very much appreciate the fact that you came here and to watch us uh, get badly dressed up, at least in my case. You know, <laughs> um, and we appreciate you coming on board today.
Reverend Abazian will give the benediction, and after that, um, that'll be the conclusion of today's program. Thank you for coming. Because we have been strengthened by the presence of the capable and powerful community leaders who have stood before us here today, go into the world with a renewed sense of hope and trust. Because we have felt the warmth and the connection present in this place today, go into the world with a generous heart and compassion as your first response. Because we have been reminded this day of how we all struggle together towards common goals, go into the world with a renewed sense of achievement and solidarity. Because we are inspired by colleagues and friends who have pledged to do the hard work that must be done to lead this beloved community, go into the world grateful for this jewel of a city and proud of our beloved brothers and sisters. Leave today remembering to be deliberate and faithful in your work, to be steadfast in living your values, to be brave in the face of adversity, and may peace be your way in the world. Thank you. Bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.